about two months has passed now since I started working on the scrap wood clock and it's finished and if you remember at the beginning of that series I said I was going to use this movement well I didn't but I'm definitely going to use it now well I imagine that you've already guessed by the uh, title of this series it's going to be a mantle clock and I'm going to use either this dial here or this dial here I got these from Craft Time Clockery. They're really nice dials and they're not expensive. Um, I'm sort of leaning towards this one here. I think this one would be better for a mantle clock. Now if you happen to Google mantle clock, what you're going to find is almost endless. Now take a look at this one here. It should look familiar because I showed it in a previous video. It's from my grandfather, but it's not a grandfather clock. And here it is sitting on our piano. I replaced the mechanical movement with a battery movement several years ago. And the battery's gone dead. I guess you can tell we don't use it to tell time. I was in my drawing program and I was trying to figure out, you know, how should this clock look? And I was uh, kind of entertaining the idea that it maybe should have a bunch of rounded features to it and so on and well it just doesn't look right so I'm gonna go back to the more traditional square look that I know looks okay and is a little easier to build and uh, now that I've decided on the dial well here's a reasonable representation of that dial now to get this reasonable representation I did it the easy way I just stole it right out of Craft Time Clockery's webpage I hope they don't mind Now if you remember in the last video, clock video that is, I used a disc this size here. But for a mantle clock, I want to use this little small one here. I think it'll look a little bit uh, more like what you'd actually find in a mantle clock that you were to buy. And being as that I always draw everything to scale, I may as well just check it out here. Okay, it's just a smidgen over two inches. Well, it's a start. Kind of a miserable start, but it's a start. I was planning on having a wood basil all around the outside of the dial, so I guess I'd better draw that first, and then I'll just redo everything here. Well, as I've mentioned before, I make these videos as I go along. And I just got back from my neighbor's house, that is the neighbor that I gave the clock to. That's actually what I was doing, I was giving him that clock, the scrap wood clock. And uh, he says, I want to get rid of that monkey wood. Uh, I don't know, maybe he was extra grateful for the clock or something. Anyway, this is uh, what they call monkey wood. Uh, I'd never heard of it until he was in here with a piece about six months ago to show it to me. And uh, I was sort of wondering, what am I going to make the mantle out of that the clock is going to sit on? And uh, I think this is what I'm going to use. So uh, this is really heavy stuff. It's from an old table. Now I'm thinking what I can do is I can put it through the bandsaw and, uh, and just trim it along here. It's probably about an inch and a half. I can get it down to uh, oh, pieces that are going to be three quarters of an inch or a little less thick. And I'll be able to make a really nice shelf out of that. Or a mantle. 
so anyway, we'll see what we can do with this monkey wood. Now I'll really be monkeying around, right? Okay, back to the drawing program. Now that I've got the uh, wood for the mantle figured out, I've got to figure out what kind of wood am I going to use on the clock itself. I've got a little bit of mahogany left over and a little bit of oak left over from other projects. I'm kind of leaning towards oak. I think that would look pretty nice sitting on a monkey wood mantle. Now in order to give the top and the bottom a nice sculpted shape, I'll probably use these cutters right here. As you can see, it's got sort of a jagged and yet smooth contour to it. I think it'll look okay.